This is uh, Mila um, Rodina, and he's from uh, um, uh, Log Homes in Geraldine, Natural Log Homes. And I also found out about you as I was searching around the internet that you are quite a um, competitive mountain bike racer and triathlete. So just a little extra fact there. Well, we were. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Milan Rodina. Uh, originally, I'm from Czech Republic. So you don't need to wonder about where my accent is from. Is from. Uh, I work for a company uh, for Nature Logos. Uh, we are based down in down in Geraldine, a couple hours uh, drive uh, south from Christchurch, and uh, we build log homes. Uh, some of you might think log homes that uh, there are a couple of companies in uh, New Zealand, and when when we talk to people, when I say log homes, some people may imagine those little logs which are being milled uh, uh, to probably, to probably to the, to the six inch or yeah, probably six inch diameter and they are machined cut and stacked on top of each other that's not what we do and that's not what I'm, what I'm going to talk about uh, that's what we do over there and you will you will see that's, that it's very closely related to, to all the things we are we are hearing at the moment uh, there are lots of Log handcrafted log companies around the world. Uh, in New Zealand, we, we are only one of uh, one of two. One, yeah, we are down in Geraldine. There's another company up in Rotorua. Um, and uh, but around the world, there is hundreds and hundreds and I, I don't want to say thousands. That would be too much, but hundreds, really. Uh, log home companies, uh, especially in North America, Canada. Uh, Scandinavia, uh, kind of Russia way, uh, yeah, many, many of them. Uh, okay. um, I will talk a little bit about the process, what we do, and then I will go uh, go down to why the construction process is uh, environmental friendly. Um, so <coughs> we build with naturally shaped logs. Uh, the logs are not being uh, machine churned like on a wood churner. Uh, they are just naturally shaped logs, which, which, which you see on the picture over there. Uh, yeah, those are Douglas fir trees, I think. Yeah, there are some Douglas fir trees, which they get they get harvested in some uh, yeah, in uh, in, uh, uh, in forest, and they get delivered to our yard. Uh, the, we are using here yeah, for the last probably 20 years. Yeah, we, we have been using only one forest which is 20 minutes drive away from our yard so you can see that the, that the distance uh, the energy being put into transporting the logs you know from where they are being grown to our, our, our yard it's 20 minutes drive on uh, let's say it takes maybe two truckloads so you need only that, mu that amount of uh, fuel uh, so we get our, our trees from the forest then uh, <laughs> It's quite interesting, you know, it's a 21st century and nowadays everything is machine oriented and everything is being done, done by robot, but uh, actually our, the logs we get, they are debarred by hand. You can see yeah, it's uh, one of our labors there. He's actually taking the, physically taking the bark off first and that what he's doing, he already took the bark off and he's peeling the logs with uh, Big draw knives. They are uh, uh, they got to be uh, they are ordered from America because they, they can't be purchased in New Zealand. Because America's got more all the law building tools and more of the law building history. Uh, so anyway, so with a big 12 inch draw knife, he's uh, taking the uh, yeah, just peeling the log. Um, so the logs are hand peeled in 21st century. There we go. Um, <laughs> Then, uh, after the logs are peeled, then the logs are being stacked up on the top of each other. Again, uh, it's, a, it's pretty much hard to stack, on, stack logs on the top of each other because the logs are being selected. And there's actually one guy in his, uh, his job, and that's his full time job, is only go and look for the next log because there is only one log on the whole yard which fits the next position on the wall. So he physically goes 
and check uh, check its little measurements and goes and physically measures all the logs until it finds the next log which fits onto the wall. And uh, after he found that, uh, then he put, we put it on the wall. And then you can see another guy there. He's he's hand fitting the log. Uh, he's hand fitting the log onto onto the wall. And uh, what he's doing, he's using the little tool called scribers, which is like a little divider with uh, with bubble on the top. And he's actually transferring the contour of one log uh, or the log below to the log above it. Then we take the log down and cut exactly to the line. And you can see the results on the right hand side there. So the logs, they fit uh, exactly to each, to each other. So they look like, like they, they grew, they grew together. Um, then we, uh, then we disassembled the house, um, uh, put it, put it, put it a little bit, uh, some gasket in, um, yeah, and that's it, and put it on trucks, and we del del deliver, deliver that to the, to the customer. The customer already prepared foundation or engaged local, local builder, uh, uh, prepared foundation for it, with, deliver the logs and then it's a matter of, depends how big the, 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 uh, the house is. Let's say for a eight, uh, 80 square meter house, it will take us a day and a half to put it together. So after day and a half, after two days, the main structure, the physical structure, the log structure, it's, uh, it's up. And what you can see, that's, that was a uh, quite a large house. Uh, this one is in a, uh, Around Lake uh, Pukeki, yeah, with the beautiful views onto Lake uh, onto Mount Cook. Um, so it was a quite a complicated house with complicated log roof system. So it took us maybe five days to reassemble it, uh, and then we yeah then we just leave it up to the up to the local builder to finish it off because it is just a, a conventional carpentry uh, from then on. Because it's not uh, efficient for the uh, for the customer that we are staying. I got three minutes to go. Oh man, I gotta move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will skip, skip, skip. All right, and uh, so just just key points. Uh, so if you look at uh, if you look at log wall, oh, one square meter of log wall, you've got three logs on the top of each other. We probably used uh, we probably used two liters of petrol to manufacture one me or actually the whole log, and uh, the log pretty much creates that's your outside cladding, that's your main structure, that's your insulation, that's your that's your building paper, that's your inside jib, that's your paint, that's everything in one log. So you can see. Um, how much energy does it have to go into creating creating a one square meter of conventional wall? A lot, right? Because outside cladding, uh, outside cladding, uh, it's uh, outside cladding has got paint on it. How much energy goes into into creating paint? Jib, a huge amount of energy. So I will I will cut it short because I've got two and a half minutes to go. Uh, so into creating into creating one square meter of a uh, conventional house wall. The, the, the wall's got a huge amount of embodied energy, including transport. You know, some, uh, some people have to transport the paint from, from manufacturer to the ITM, uh, to, the, to the building, uh, sorry, to the, uh, to the ITM department. Then it has to be transported to the building site. There's just a huge amount of embodied energy with a log wall, the loss get delivered from 20 minutes drive away. It takes two liters of petrol on the yard to create for, for the whole log uh, to create uh, square one square meter of logs, uh, one square meter of wall. So yeah, it's uh, it's uncomparable. Um, another thing is some people. If you look at this picture, you know it looks like lots of logs. That's right. And some people, some people might think, all right, and don't. Uh, don't log homes waste, uh, waste trees? Uh, not really. A study has been done in the US that, uh, I've got some numbers in here, uh, that uh, 170 square meter uh, conventional home uses about 57 cubic meters of, uh, of logs. Because uh, you get logs, uh, you get logs, uh, logs get delivered to the sawmill 
and they are being milled into into uh, into timber. So you can see there is lots of waste. I got one minute. There is lots of waste um, with uh, so and with to to make 170 uh, square meter log home, it takes pretty much the same 55 cubic meters of logs. So you can see because we got no waste. The waste on the yard we get. We've got very minimum from debarking logs, as, as the, you, you saw before. Uh, debarking logs, the bark get, gets used on, um, on local gardens. We've got firewood that gets used. It's uh, pretty much uh, no waste we get on the yard. Plus uh, the facilities we have on the yard. Um, we don't need any big boilers like some companies do. We just need a we just need a yard with uh, with some kind of moving moving equipment like crane or a forklift. But there is with there is only a little bit of energy which goes into processing into into making a log house because as you saw before, uh, there's lots of handcrafted and lots of hand work which goes in, which goes in it. So. Uh, that's, that's all I have today.